So last week we covered unit testing. Now the next logical step is widget testing. So what's the difference between those two? Well, unit testing covers a unit of code or a function and it tests the logic behind that. With widget testing, you test a widget and basically you test the, how the UI works and how it interacts with other widgets. So let's get into it. All right, so the app we're gonna write these widget tests for is the same app we wrote the unit test for. It's very simple. Make widget test video. Add a plus, it adds it to your to-dos from database. So you wait one second and then it adds from database with a check mark. So one thing to note is all of this is static and defined within the app. It's just a list. There's no actual database calls. And the database call is just a mock it says, just returns from database and true all the time. So if you refresh, all of this is gone. There's no actual database. That's important because if we were clicking the load to do from database and was calling a database, that test would be a lot tougher. But this is just an introduction, so let's go. So just like we did with the unit tests, here we can check the unit test. We have a main and then we have our test defined like that. We'll just test the same thing. We need a main, but then instead of just test like we do with normal testing we do test widgets so then same thing we need a description add a to do and a callback function where you write your actual test so for widget tests you're going to have this thing called a widget tester so this is the actual thing that drives your whole test so what do i mean by drives so you could pretend this tester is like the person that's using the app so let's say we want to click this button we do tester.tap. Let's say we want to click the field where we type stuff in. We do tester.enter text. But first things first, before we could do any tapping, we need to actually find these widgets. There's multiple ways to find them, but the easiest way, in my opinion, is by keys. You do that by find, by key. So for example, we have keys like add field. So if we go back to the home screen, every single thing that we're gonna need has a key for it. So the text form field, which is this, has an add field, the button, the key is add button. And then for the this raise button, we have load from database key. So that's the easiest way to find it, but you could do any other way like find dot by icon, by element type, by tooltip, by type, by widget, and you can explore those on your own, but I think the key is the easiest. So add button, we find by value key as well. And there we have all our things set up. So step one is find all the widgets needed. Step two, execute the actual test. And the last part will be check outputs. So to execute the test, we're going to need to use the tester finally. So tester.pump widget. This should be the first, first part of the actual test for every single widget test. So this pump widget, you could look at the description, renders the UI for the given widget. So it basically brings the widget that you're trying to test to the forefront. So we're going to be testing the home widget. Now, one special thing is we need to wrap this home widget in a material app. That is because in the home widget, we use a scaffold and you can't really have a scaffold or anything without a material app. So now we have the home widget brought up and ready to play with, and we can just go ahead and do all the things we need to do in order to test the UI. So first we're gonna add a text. We're gonna add a text into the add field. So that's what the finder is. And what text are we gonna get? Make widget testing video. And then after you add the text, we need to click the button and we're gonna click this add button. So all the things you would logically do are done, but there's one more step we're gonna need to do and that is pump. So this pump, all it does, it rebuilds your widget. So it's like a set state buffer widget test. So that should be it. Now just to check the outputs and that's it. We can expect to find a text of make 
widget testing video. And this matcher basically we need to define how many how many widgets of this kind we should find. So you can do finds none, finds one, finds multiple widgets. So we want to do finds one widget because we only added one. That's it. That's all widget test is. So now if you run it, we should see a green check mark pop up and our test pass. Great. So that's really it for widget testing. I think widget testing is a lot simpler than unit testing, at least in my opinion. You don't have to worry about any complex logic. All you have to do is just test that the UI does what it's supposed to do. Just walk through the steps that you would as if you were playing with the app for real, and then check the outputs. We're gonna add another one just for fun. We're gonna call this test add from database. And then we have our load from database button that we have defined in the home. Let's see load from database, that's this. We can pump our home widget again. And then await tester dot tap load from database. And in here, our database should return a from database to do item so let's run this and I'm happy we're gonna show an error I think yes so let's check that error so this error says no matching nodes found in the widget tree so for some reason our tap did not bring up a to do item now this one could be a little bit tougher to debug but if we go to our database we'll see we have a future that delayed for one second. It doesn't add it directly. If we click it, you wait one second and then it adds it. Now widget test, we're just going right through it. No problem. Simple solution for that though. When you pump, give a duration. Seconds. We'll do two seconds to make sure it's there. And now if we run the tests, everything should pass. Perfect. So that's it. That's all there really is to widget tests. Obviously, they can get a little bit more complex in this example, but if you understand what's going on in your application and you understand the fundamentals of widget testing, you should be able to figure it out. But that's it for this video. This code will be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.